All praise to the Most High Yah, for he is the Elohim of love, hope, and faith. This is your brother El, and I'm joined by my wife, the High Empress Keziah, my love. Mm -hmm. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. All praise to the Father. You know, the Most High definitely has ordained marriage as something that is a lesson to us. We can learn how to love the Most High through the institution of marriage. We can even learn more how to love ourselves through the institution of marriage. And there's no other thing on earth greater as an example of how to bear the fruit of the spirit than marriage. We see and learn how to be patient in marriage. We see and learn how to have love in marriage. We see and learn how to have long suffering, gentleness, goodness, all those fruits of the spirit. We learn how to operate in these things in marriage and also with the gifts of the spirit, the wisdom, the words of knowledge, the faith, the gifts of healing. All these things are rooted and manifested in love and the institution of marriage is a wonderful institution that the Most High has brought forth that will help us manifest all these gifts and fruits towards one another. For remember, the scripture says that we are the bride of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Us being the bride of the Messiah, it teaches us how to deal with our women. Us being the bride of the Messiah, it causes us to be humble and know that we have to rely on the Most High as our head and as our leader. Just like my wife relies upon me as her head and her leader. Those of you others out there who are married and who are men of the Most High, your wife depends on you for that leadership. And likewise, we deal with them in gentleness. We deal with them in love. We deal with them in honor to lead them. And they follow us as we follow the Most High and the Messiah. That's the proper order. And in all of that interacting and in all of that cooperation, the fruits of the spirit are born. And that's what we want to speak about today is the gifts and fruits of the spirit in this walk. The gifts and fruits of the spirit in this way that we're on to inherit eternal life. So bear with us here. We're going to go through this and take our time. I wanted my wife to come on with me today so that we can exemplify and show forth what it means for the Hebrew man and the Hebrew woman to work together. This is what the Most High has instituted for us to be a team, for us to be a partnership. And I pray that this is an example to the other married couples out there for you all to begin ministering together. Last night, me and my wife had our 3 a.m. prayer session and we were up. Some things were shared that was very powerful in the spirit and what I want is for all of our people to experience those type of things, to pray together, to fast together, to write goals together, to speak things into existence together, to create and manifest together. That's what the father wants. And so often in this walk, especially amongst the quote unquote Hebrew community, very rarely do you see people talk about the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit and the inward man and the character. We got to remember out of everything else, these are the things that will get us in the kingdom, bearing those fruits. As the Messiah said, ye shall know them by their fruits. What we're going to be doing as the Most High gives us grace for the next few days, my wife and I are going to be a team. And we're going to come in here and we're going to speak about the gifts and fruits of the spirit. And we're going to touch on the first gift of the spirit and the first fruit of the spirit today. And over the next few days, we're going to touch on the rest of them and really take our time and digest this so that our inward man can begin to reflect the spirit of truth that the father desires us to walk in. So I'm going to ask you, love, please. Start off and read to us 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. And take your time, love. Okay. All right. Well, it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are different differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 
and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretations of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same self spirit, dividing to every man several severally as he as he will. Thank you. There we see in First Corinthians twelve, it's given us gifts of the spirit, and if we're to count them, we come up with nine of the main gifts of the spirit. I'm going to read them over again here. There's the spirit of wisdom, word of knowledge. Faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues. That makes nine gifts of the spirit. Now, here's where it gets interesting and here's where we see the deep wisdom of the most high. For we see here that there's nine gifts of the spirit. Now we're going to go to Galatians chapter five, verse 22 through 23, and we're going to see that there's also nine fruits of the spirit. And we're going to talk about how the gifts and the fruits mirror each other and how we walk with the manifestation of gifts and fruits on this path to the kingdom. It's important that we have the gifts and fruits of the spirit operating in our life. So I'm going to ask you, love, please read Galatians chapter five. Verse 22 through 23 about the fruits of the spirit. Yeah, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. Hallelujah. Thank you. There we see Galatians five. Let's look at those fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance, nine fruits of the spirit. And those nine fruits of the spirit perfectly mirror the nine gifts of the spirit. As I said, most high will his grace be with us over the next few days. We're going to be speaking about these gifts and fruits of the spirit individually. What I want to start with today is talking about one of the gifts of the spirit, which is the spirit of wisdom. And then one fruit of the spirit, which is the fruit of love. First, we're going to talk about the spirit of wisdom. The first thing we need to understand when it comes to wisdom is that we have to take it back to Torah for the law and command is our wisdom. It all begins with that. We're not able to have the gift of the spirit of wisdom move and operate in our life if we first have not started with the source of wisdom, which is the most high and his laws and commandments. So I'm going to ask you, my love, please read Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five through six. So we can see in those scriptures that it's the law and commands that is the source and beginning of our wisdom. Absolutely. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my God, commanded me that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read this phrase again. It says, keep therefore and do them, meaning the laws and commands, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. The law and command is our wisdom. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Most High, our daily bread. These laws and commands are What would cause us to have the gift of the spirit of wisdom? That's the main source. It says it right here in Deuteronomy 4, 5 through 6. It's undeniable, brothers and sisters. That's the basis of wisdom is the law and command. This is why in Ecclesiastes 12, we're told. Now, what is the end of the matter? Fear the most high. Keep his commands. For that is the whole duty of man. And we know, according to Proverbs, that the fear of the most high is the beginning of of wisdom, all praise. We got to go back to the origin. 
for the gift of the spirit of wisdom to operate in our life. We have to start with the laws and commands of Torah. We're also going to see that what's written in Deuteronomy four, five through six is confirmed in Joshua chapter one, verse seven through eight. How meditating on the laws and commands of Torah is what manifests the spirit of wisdom to move in our life. So, my love, please read Joshua chapter one, verse seven through eight for us. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. And remember, family, we're talking about the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit. Both of these things have to deal with the inward man and character. These are the things that are the foundation and base of our walk. These are the things that matter the most. Mattering more than who Esau is. Mattering more than do you wear fringes or teeth seats. Mattering more than did Samson have braids or dreadlocks. Mattering more than was Japheth brown skinned or was he pale skinned. Mattering more than what camp you with. Mattering more than whether you think the 400 year prophecy ends in 2019 or it happens whenever the Messiah returns to gather us matters more than all this other stuff that folks like to focus on. The main aspect of this walk is bearing these fruits and moving in these gifts to do the work of the most high in the earth. That's what matters most. Remember, it's going to be people whenever they stand before the judgment seat of Messiah, they'll say, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do many amazing works in your name? And then he's going to say, okay, but where that fruit at though? Where's that fruit? I don't recognize your fruit. Your fruit is rotten to me. So you ain't getting up in here. I don't care how many people you baptize. I don't care how many demons you cast out. I don't care how many poor and widow and orphan that you ministered to. You did not have the fruit of wisdom. You did not have the fruit of love. So you're not getting up in here. This VIP only. You ain't getting in here. That true relationship with God, they don't have. So it's it's very important that we we get to understand and know how to really, truly, you know, uh, have these, these fruits of the spirit. We have to apply it to our life daily, every single day. The gifts and fruits of the spirit. All right. Now we're going to see even more that the law and command of Torah is the basis of our wisdom. Listen to this. Psalm 119, 98. I'll read it. It says, thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Look at that. The scripture here is telling us that it's the law and command of Torah that makes us wise, even more wiser than our enemies. For we are in the midst of our enemies. In order for us to rule in the midst of our enemies, we have to have wisdom. Even the Messiah said that be ye wise as serpents. This is why we must have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of wisdom is a gift of the spirit. Without wisdom, we have no stability for wisdom is the stability of your times, as the scripture says. And we don't get wisdom unless we first go to the laws and commandments. This is truth walk 101. This is eternal life walk 101. These are the basics that a lot of brothers and sisters have to revisit because people, like I said, we neglect talks like this about the gifts and fruits of the spirit. That save the soul. Precisely. Absolutely. Here we are we're on day 93 of this hundred day journey. We've spoken about all other topics and all everything else. But I want to end the 100 day journey on this note of talking about the gifts and fruits of the spirit, because this is ultimately what's going to get us in the kingdom. But let's keep talking about how we get this gift of the spirit of wisdom. Please read James chapter one, verse five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the most high that giveth to all men liberally and upbraid not and it shall be given him. Hallelujah. So the scripture right there is letting us know 
All we have to do is ask for wisdom and the most high will grant wisdom. Literally, it's as easy as asking, ask and you shall receive. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the wisdom of Solomon starting at chapter eight, verse 21. And I'm going to read us some powerful things about the spirit of wisdom for according to scriptures, the most high gives wisdom a feminine characteristic. How beautiful is that? The spirit of wisdom has a feminine characteristic. I know the other day I did a discussion about the queen of heaven spirit. And I realized that there were people who misunderstood. There were people who allowed offense to fester in their heart. And I'm going to go through some scriptures here that lets us know that wisdom has a feminine characteristic. And this will help edify many of you sisters out there to where instead of having the queen of heaven type spirit, you can have the spirit of wisdom. For the scripture says wisdom is feminine. Hallelujah. Let's look at these beautiful scriptures. This is going to edify a lot of you sisters, a lot of you wives, a lot of you mothers to be inspired by the spirit of wisdom. For like you, wisdom has a feminine spirit. Here's what it says in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter eight, starting at verse 21. It says, but I perceived that I could not win her unless the most high gave her to me. And this too came of understanding to know from whom the favor came. I appealed to the most high and besought him and said with all my heart. Now we're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine. And this is the prayer that King Solomon prayed in order to receive the spirit of wisdom. If you also want to receive the spirit of wisdom, which is a gift of the spirit, go to wisdom of Solomon chapter nine every day. Pray this prayer for wisdom in wisdom of Solomon chapter nine, verse one through 13. And the father will hear you just like we read in James chapter one, verse five. When you ask for wisdom, the father will give it liberally, freely. He wants to give you wisdom. All praise. Here's what it says in wisdom of Solomon chapter nine. This is the prayer of Solomon for the spirit of wisdom. Most high of my fathers and merciful Elohim who created all things by your word and by your wisdom form man to rule over the creatures you had made and manage the world in holiness and uprightness and pass judgment in rectitude of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by your throne and do not reject me as unfit to be one of your servants. For I am your slave and the son of your maidservant, a man weak and short lived and inferior in my understanding of judgment. For even if one among the sons of men is perfect, if the wisdom that comes from you is lacking, he will count for nothing. You have chosen me out to be king of your people and to be judge of your sons and daughters. You told me to build a sanctuary on your holy mountain and an altar in the city where you dwell, a copy of the holy tent which you prepared in the beginning. And with you is wisdom which knows your works and was present when you made the world. Here the scripture saying is that the spirit of wisdom that is a gift of the spirit was present when the most high made the world right by his side. Just like my wife is right by my side right now. The most high in wisdom, the most high in his spirit were one. That's the beauty of marriage. It teaches us to operate in this same spirit where we become one with wisdom. Listen to what it says. And with you is wisdom, which knows your works and was present when you made the world and understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is in accord with your commands. Send her forth from the holy heavens and dispatch her from your glorious throne to be with me in toil. And so that I may know what is pleasing to you for she Again, the in the feminine, for she knows and understands all things and she will guide me with good sense in my actions and will guard me with her splendor. Then my doings will be acceptable and I will judge your people uprightly and be worthy of the throne of my father. Ain't that beautiful? So the first woman that we must love as men of the most high is wisdom. I would not know how to love my wife correctly if I did not first get wisdom. Wisdom is the key to teach me as a man how to deal with my wife in love and in righteous leadership and to lead her like the Messiah leads me. 
So us men of the most high, we have to be humble enough, just like Solomon was to pray and ask for that wisdom. And as I just read in the scripture, the wisdom is a feminine spirit. Hallelujah. That's why I thank the most high for the sisters. The other day, whenever I did that video about the queen of heaven spirit, I thank you so much for the sisters that came in the comment section and talked about how they understood what was being said, how they understood the rebuke, how they understood the correction and how it edified them. I'm thankful for the, to the most high for you all. And I want y'all to know that brother L strongly supports the righteous daughters of Zion. I'm married to a beautiful and righteous daughter of Zion and us men of the most high must do right by our women. Yet that doesn't mean that we don't need to bring correction where it needs to be brought only in the spirit of edification. So you sisters that's looking for something good to look to read these verses about wisdom. The scripture talks about wisdom. We must love her as a sister, as a mother, strive to be like wisdom. If you have no aunts, no women in the uh, truth that you can look up to, no mother that you could look up to. A lot of the women that surrounding you is worldly. Look to wisdom and the gift of wisdom as an example of how to truly manifest that righteous feminine nature that you have. Hallelujah. And and what's interesting is wisdom is actually from the scriptures. Everything that you need to know about life is in the scriptures. Anything that you any problems you have in your family, uh, your relationship, you know, with work, you can get that wisdom from the scriptures, not a YouTube video. Nothing, nothing like that. You get this wisdom from scriptures, prayer, fasting. The father I mean, is there for everybody, everybody. People are quoting YouTube videos more than they're quoting the scriptures, you know, in the comment section. They, like they want to prove a point, but they'll use a YouTube video instead of the actual scripture to prove that point, you know. And that's sad. That's that's the time we live in. But if you want wisdom, it's all in the scriptures. It's right there. You know what I'm saying? Pray for wisdom. Hallelujah. And that's why we are here as a team, me and my wife, to give an example to the other brothers and sisters out there that the Hebrew man and the Hebrew woman needs to be a team. Hallelujah. So again, I thank you sisters that support and understand the ministry and the message being brought forth. You understand the spirit behind what we're doing here. There are many individuals out there that unfortunately will be used of the enemy. As I talked about in the discussion the other day, that many of those spirits would come in the comment section and try to spread confusion and slander and accusation. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So I'm here with my wife as a team to show some of you others out there who may have seen that video the other day and may not have understood it in the fullness. I'm showing you here that we're not about what some of these other Hebrew brothers you see out here is about of beating down our women, but not giving no solutions. Some of you may have saw those comments and without hearing the whole video, you may have thought I was coming in a wrong spirit because of the folks that the enemy sent to try to bring confusion. But we're going to get victory over that. And today the devil will be shown a liar that we're not bringing forth anything that is a disrespect or an abuse to our women. We're here to help heal the relationship between the Hebrew man and the Hebrew woman. And both sides have to do our part and work as a team. So the devil is defeated by the power of Yah. Hallelujah. Now, remember, we're talking about the gift of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, which is a gift of the spirit. Let's go to also wisdom of Solomon. No, rather, let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. I'm going to read chapter four, verse 11 through 19. It's also going to let us know that that spirit of wisdom is feminine in nature. Listen to what it says. Wisdom makes her sons exalted and lays hold of those who seek her. Whoever loves her loves life and those who seek her early will be filled with joy. Whoever holds her fast will win glory. The Most High will bless every house he enters. Those who serve her serve the Holy One and the Most High loves those who love her. Whoever obeys her will judge the heathen and whoever attends to her will dwell in security. If he trusts in her, he will possess her and his descendants will retain possession of her. 
This verse right here is one of my wife's favorites that she always quotes whenever we're talking about the scriptures with each other about how wisdom will test you. Just like at times a woman will test your manhood <laughs> to make sure that you are stand up alpha and a righteous man. Wisdom is no different. Hallelujah. But we as the men of the most high must pass the test time and time again. Here's what it says. Verse 17. For at first she will go with him in devious ways. She will bring fear and cowardice upon him and torment him with her discipline until she can trust in his soul and test him with her judgments. Then she will come straight back to him again and make him glad and reveal her secrets to him. If he wanders off, she will forsake him and hand him over to his downfall. What this is saying is that the spirit of wisdom does not want no weak man. The spirit of wisdom does not want no simp that's going to fold. Whenever the trials and tribulations of life get rough, the spirit of wisdom does not want a beta male who's going to run from his responsibility and not stand up as the captain and leader of the household. So wisdom will test your soul to see if you're willing to endure. For remember, only those who endure will inherit the kingdom and our women do the same thing. Many of them will do little things to try to see where your manhood is at. Be it right or be it wrong, the fact remains that you will be tested by wisdom and by the woman that you're leading because she needs to know that you're rock strong. She needs to know that if some heathens would try to run up on her, that you would be there for the protection and those heathens would get dealt with for trying to put their hands on her. Hallelujah. Wisdom also needs to know that you will be a man who will endure to the end and never forsake the most high when the fire comes, when the trial comes. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six, verse 12 through 22, and read some more about the spirit of wisdom. We going through this so you can know the power of the gift of the spirit of wisdom. Here's what it says. Wisdom is bright and unfading, and she is easily seen by those who love her and found by those who search for her. She forestalls those who desire her by making herself known first. The man who rises early to seek her will not have to toil, for he will find her sitting at his gates. For to think of her is the highest understanding, and the man who is vigilant for her sake will soon be free from care. For she goes about in search of those who are worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. For the truest beginning of her is the desire for instruction and concern for instruction is love of her and love for her is observance of her laws. There it is again talking about the Torah and adherence to her laws is assurance of immortality. The spirit of wisdom leads to eternal life and immortality brings men near to the most high. So the desire for wisdom leads to a kingdom. If therefore you take pleasure in thrones and scepters, monarchs of the people, honor wisdom so that you may reign forever. That's letting us know how powerful wisdom is and wisdom is a feminine spirit. That's why we must not neglect the feminine. That's why the enemy created the substitute that queen of heaven spirit, which is a spirit of whoredom and sorcery because he's trying to create a, a, a wicked substitute for the spirit of wisdom. The righteous feminine spirit in scripture is the spirit of wisdom and the wicked feminine spirit in scripture is the spirit of the queen of heaven. Do you see that? Many people got offended of the video the other day because I was going against the spirit of the queen of heaven and they took it as I was going against the spirit of wisdom. This just shows how unlearned some of us are, but we're going to correct that today. Never would I ever speak against the spirit of wisdom for the scripture here tells me honor wisdom so that you may reign forever. I want to reign. I want to have immortality in the most high. So I will never dishonor wisdom. I will never dishonor the Holy Spirit. Never, ever, ever, ever. But I will go to war against the queen of heaven spirit. Let's read more. Verse 22. But what wisdom is and how she came to be, I will declare and I will not hide these secrets from you, but I will trace her out from the beginning of creation. Here, the scripture is telling us that the spirit of wisdom, which is one of the gifts of the spirit, has been in existence before creation. 
Let's keep reading here. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 7 through 12. It says, Therefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepters and thrones, and I thought wealth of no account compared with her. I did not think a priceless stone her equal, for all the gold in her presence is just a little sand, and silver is no better than mud before her. I loved her more than health and good looks, and I preferred her even to light. And and her radiance is unceasing, but all blessings came to me along with her and uncounted wealth is in her hands. And I rejoiced over them all because wisdom ruled them, for I did not know that she was their mother. Here we see that the spirit of wisdom is like a mother. Let's go to wisdom of Solomon. Also the same chapter. Let's read verses 21 on down. Listen to the beautiful words it has to say about wisdom here. Listen. You got to really internalize this. It says all that was secret or manifest. I learned for wisdom, the fashioner of all things taught me for there is in her a spirit that is intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, mobile, clear, undefiled, distinct, beyond harm, loving the good, keen, unhindered, beneficent, philanthropic, firm, sure, free from care, all powerful, all seeing and interpenetrating all spirits that are intelligent, pure and most subtle. Look at those beautiful words of praise for the spirit of wisdom. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion and she penetrates and permeates everything because she is so pure. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure emanation of his almighty glory. Therefore, nothing defiled can enter into her. For she is a reflection of the everlasting light and a spotless mirror of the activity of the Most High and a likeness of his goodness. Though she is one, she can do all things. And while remaining in herself, she makes everything new and passing into holy souls generation after generation. She makes them friends of the most high and prophets for the most high loves nothing but the man who lives with wisdom. Here, the scripture is saying that the father favors the man who loves the spirit of wisdom. That's why wisdom and the spirit of wisdom is a gift of the spirit. It's a gift. We have to be humble in order to receive this gift of the spirit of wisdom. We will not get to the kingdom unless we have the spirit of wisdom. For it says in verse 29, for she is fairer than the sun or any group of stars compared with light. She is found superior for night succeeds to it. But evil cannot overpower wisdom. Listen to that. Evil cannot overpower wisdom. That's why we must get the gift of the spirit, which is the spirit of wisdom. Chapter eight, for she reaches in strength from one end of the earth to the other and conducts everything well. I loved her and sought after her from my youth up and I undertook to make her my bride. This is a love story, y'all. That's why the next thing we're going to talk about is the fruit of love, which is one of the fruits of the spirit, because it connects perfectly with talking about the spirit of wisdom. Love, wisdom, all this goes together and it has to be the foundation of what's in our heart in order for us to bear those fruits that will make us acceptable to the father. This is all about the inward man. This is all about character. Get your mind off Esau and Deuteronomy 28 and 2019 and the world war and all that. Because if we ain't bearing the fruits of the spirit of the inward man, it don't matter when the nuclear war and Gog and Magog and all that stuff y'all like to feel smart because you know about. You ain't going to get in or I'm not going to get in if we don't have these fruits and gifts of the spirit. Get your mind on what matters most. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, I loved her and sought after her from my youth up and I undertook to make her my bride and I fell in love with her beauty. She glorifies her high birth and living with the most high for the most high of all loves her. Even the father loves the spirit of wisdom. That's why blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unforgivable for the father is a righteous alpha. He protects the spirit of wisdom so much so where anybody who violates the spirit of wisdom will never receive forgiveness. That's how us as the men of Israel need to protect our queens, that it will be unforgivable for anybody to violate them. All praise to the father. These women are worth killing for some of them. Some of them are not. That's why some must repent, change and become in the, the image of the spirit of wisdom. 
But the righteous, upright daughters of Zion, our wives, our daughters, our sisters, just like Simeon and Levi slaughtered a whole city of men for violating their sister. That's how we must do to protect our women and our daughters. All praise to the father. Verse three, she glorifies her high birth in living with the most high for the most high of all loves her for she is initiated into the knowledge of the most high and is a searcher of his works. But if the possession of wealth is to be desired in life, what is richer than wisdom, which operates everything? And if understanding works, who in all the world is a greater craftsman than she? And if a man loves uprightness, her labors are virtues, for she teaches self-control and understanding, uprightness and courage. Nothing in life is more useful to men than these. But if a man longs for much experience, she knows antiquity and can forecast the future. She understands the tricks of language and the solving of riddles. She knows the meaning of signs, importance, and the outcomes of seasons and periods. So I decided to bring her to live with me, knowing that she would give me good counsel and encouragement in cares and griefs. Because of her, I will have glory among the multitude and honor with the elders. Though I am young, I will be found king in judgment, and I will be admired in the presence of monarchs. When I am silent, they will wait for me to speak. And when I speak, they will pay attention. And if I talk at some length, they will put their hands over their mouths. Because of her, I will have immortality and leave an everlasting memory to those who come after me. Ain't that beautiful? Listen to what it says in verse 16. When I enter my house, I will find rest with her for intercourse with her has no bitterness and living with her, no grief, but gladness and joy. That's just beautiful. That's what you call the fruit of love. We must first fall in love with the spirit of wisdom. That should be our first love. That's why the Messiah in Revelation says, repent and return to your first love. This is a love story, y'all. Before Esau, Deuteronomy 28, uh, all the debates and questions folks like to get into before all that nonsense. That's just a drain and a thorn in the side. The essence of this walk is a love story. And with that said, let's talk about the fruit of love. Please read Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four through six for me, love. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Hallelujah. The first command, brothers and sisters, is love. That's why we have to get this fruit of love, which is a fruit of the Spirit, ingrained in us first. The spirit of wisdom and the fruit of love is the two main things we must first have in this walk before we discuss anything else. Before we discuss Esau, before we discuss Deuteronomy 28, because for some reason y'all are overly obsessed with that. But you're not obsessed with the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit. This is right here what we need to be obsessed with. Please read for me Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 7 through 9. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which ye had, he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen. From the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenants and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. There we see that love is the foundation of the walk. And as the Messiah said, if you love me, keep my commands. And how do we know his commands? Through the spirit of wisdom, by meditating on the laws and commands. So love and wisdom go hand in hand. The fruit of love and the gift of the spirit of wisdom they are, they're married. It's a marriage. It's a love story. For the whole reason the Most High chose us was not because we were almighty, not because the melanin in our skin, not because our talents and gifts. He simply chose us because he loved us. So we must not get all pumped up in the flesh either, pumped up in our melanin, pumped up in our talents and gifts for music and athletics, pumped up in all these other things that we think makes us so set apart. 
The only thing that is the essence of us even being chosen in the first place was love. And that's all it'll ever be from now to eternity. Please read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 for me. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? So again, it's about the fruit of love. Joshua 23, 11, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Most High your Elohim. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Please read the rest for me, love, about how love suffers long. Keep going. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Wherefore, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Hallelujah. So here we see in these scriptures that love is also feminine. For he says, love does not behave itself uh, unseemly nor seeketh her own. So the spirit of wisdom and love are both feminine. Ain't that something? And the father gives us that metaphor and that foreshadowing. So us as the men of the most high can learn to love our women and lead them as he leads us for we are also his bride. We have to have the same mentality as King David did. Let's see why King David responded whenever his wives, his women, was stolen because this is the same spirit we need to have to protect our women. Here's what it says in first Samuel 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the South and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the most high is Elohim. These are the scriptures that we now know that David was a righteous alpha because let's see if he just let it slide and said, oh, I can just get other wives. Oh, well, I don't care about the daughters of Zion. Uh, they, they ain't nothing anyway. They wicked. Let's see if he had that mentality or let's see if he went back to take his women back. It says next. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Listen to what David did to those folks that violated his women. And David smote them from the twilight, even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them except 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. So David fought for his bride. He had that 
fruit of love to protect and provide for his bride. And the Messiah, who is the son of David and the king has the exact same spirit. Because let's go to Revelation 19 and let's see how he is going to go to war for his bride. This is the fruit of love. It says, and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the most high our Elohim for true and righteous are his judgments. Let's listen and see who the father has judged for he have judged the great whore, that spirit of the queen of heaven that I rebuked the other day that so many folks got in their feelings about here. The scripture says the great whore is going to be judged. Hallelujah. For he have judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and at the avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, hallelujah, for the most high omnipotent reign. Now, here's where the love story comes in. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife, beautiful, has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of Yah. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Just like King David went to fight for his bride, the Messiah is going to do the same thing. This is what you call the fruit of love. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of Yah. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty Elohim. This is what the Messiah was talking about when he said, there's no greater love than in a man lay down his life for his friends. That's why, brothers and sisters, we must have the gift of the spirit. First and foremost, the spirit of wisdom. We must have the fruits of the spirit. First and foremost, the fruit of love, the spirit of wisdom and the fruit of love. Meditate on these things. Let it become a part of your walk. Let it be the main important part of your walk to renew the inward man. This is how we become a new creature in Yeshua, our husband. This is how we become one with him through the gift of the spirit of wisdom and the fruit of of love. Feel free to join in the comment section. We're not going to spread no debate and slander. I want people to come in the comment section to spread love. Let's talk about how we can heal the relationship between the Hebrew man and the Hebrew woman. Be you single, be you married. We want you in the comment section flooded with comments. Let's fellowship. Let's learn how to walk in the spirit of wisdom and in the fruit of love. Most how will me and my wife will be back tomorrow to discuss more of these gifts of the spirit and fruits of the spirit so that our inward man can be renewed day by day. And we can have our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Shalom. Shabbat shalom.